There's William, who's six, and uh, William loves the Mr. Men. There's Adam, who's ten, who gets upset sometimes because he can't play outside with the other boys and girls. Then there's Alex, who's five, and Alex shoots at everybody, and he goes... <laughs> It's quite wearing. After a while, it gets on your nerves. <laughs> then there's Brenda, who's... I'm not sure whether she's 13 or 14. She doesn't mince her words. <laughs> she and another personality of mine, Carl, who's 16, have both harmed me um, in the past. And uh, there's Jamie and Elizabeth but uh, they don't appear as often. So there's seven. <laughs> They're all me. <laughs> That's why I'm so screwed up. I could show you... Oh, excuse me. I could show you the, the new Lego that I've got that I'm going to start building soon. Okay, can we have a look at it later? Yes. All right. Okay. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm uh, laughing. Uh, I've just been chatting to Adam. All right. <laughs> there, I lost a chunk of time. <laughs> I can hear a little voice in my head. <laughs> Say. Mr. William, oh no. Mr. William. Hello, William. Is that the original Mr. Happy? Yes, Mr. Happy. When I was 14, I saw a child psychiatrist and I was always listening to the Who, Four Faces. And it says, I've got four this, four that, four the other and I don't know which one's me. Helen is very isolated. She has little contact with her family and she only has one good friend, Derek. Socially, I don't feel very confident. And so, consequently, then I live quite an isolated life, but I've lived alone since I was 17 anyway, so it's no big deal, really. I tend to relate better to people who are older than myself. Adam can be quite assertive and lively at times, but on other days I saw a quite different, subdued little boy. I soon learned how to lift his spirits and I knew exactly where to take him. I would have liked to have gone for a bike ride, but my tyre's flat. Sometimes I just wish that I had some friends I could play with, but they don't see me as Adam, they see me as Helen. <laughs> I know I haven't got a willy, but just because I haven't got a willy and I'm not a boy doesn't mean that I can't be friends with people. <laughs> Sometimes I come out to protect Helen from the baddies, but other times I come out to play. <laughs> Oops. Oh. oh, are you all right, sweet? Are you yeah. okay? Have you fallen on something? My arm. Where? I'm intoxicated there with alcohol, and yet I don't drink. So one of the altars must have been drinking. And... That annoys me. You're right, babe. Yeah. yeah. It's worrying to see that. Because I could walk out in front of a bus. I also thought things would work out for Helen, but her condition means she's unable to hold down a full time job. She lives in a council flat and survives on benefits. Conventional medicine doesn't offer any solutions. There are no drugs to cure DID, only to control the symptoms. These are Prozac, which 
is a, an antidepressant and I'm on the highest dose, which is 60 milligram. I've been taking those for 14 years. They help keep my mood on an even keel. And I take diazepam, which is Valium. The Valium just calm me down and keep me chilled out. <laughs> these are Olanzapine. They're an antipsychotic. Then these, the last one, the Zopiclone, which is a sleeping tablet. It was upsetting to see Helen taking so many pills. I wanted to know what was going on inside her head. She gave me her diaries from when her altars first appeared. I thought that they might hold the key to discovering how her multiple personalities had been formed. It was chilling to see some of the dialogue between the different altars. I read page after page describing the pain Helen was suffering. One entry particularly caught my attention. The sun is shining outside and I'm feeling really low. Part of me feels like overdosing, but I know that the next one might kill me and I don't want that. I just want to block it all out. Carl. I've overdosed about 100 times. It was not me as Helen, it was Brenda or Carl that was doing it. And it wasn't ever to kill myself. It was to block out pain. Carl and Brenda started cutting myself. And there's some new scars here, but some old ones as well. I cut an artery once and that scared the living daylights out of me. It's been virtually continual cutting myself for the last 10 years. When I picked her up from hospital after one of her altars had cut her arms, it saddened me. She seemed to have no control over the more troubled personalities, like Carl, Brenda and Alex, who all seemed to be avoiding me. And the cutting, is that who... Oh, that was Carl as well, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't know for definite. Mm -hmm. Nobody's confessed. <laughs> I was still struggling to understand why Helen's personalities hurt her if they are supposed to be created to help her when I finally met the elusive Carl. How old are you? 16. And I'm a cool dude. I would appreciate knowing who cut my arms yesterday and why. And the same goes with regard to taking of any pills. All of this upsets me a great deal. Why do you do it? Why? Helen. Why do you do it? Because it's easier to feel physical pain than it is emotional pain. What does Helen think about that? I think she understands, but she doesn't like the fact that her arms have been cut to shreds. Dear Helen, I'm sorry it was me, but it was either that or taking the tablets. I cut because I hurt inside and I felt desperate. I'm scared if I say what happened, people will think I'm evil. In like what we call the team, one of my roles is to have some escapism and I've learned not to do it dangerously now. Like it used to be pills and it used to be alcohol, it used to be drugs and stuff, you know, but um sorry, I can hear William talking in my head. Yeah. <laughs> um He's just saying hello. Mr. Happy says hello. Helen told me she had created her multiple personalities whilst enduring severe abuse as a child, but it bothered me that she herself had no memories of what might have happened or who might have been responsible. To my horror, I discovered that many people with Helen's disorder believe that they suffered ritual abuse at the hands of a satanic cult. I couldn't believe that Satanist abuse actually goes on in our society. Helen told me she knew of a psychiatrist who has been working with DID sufferers with these kinds of memories for 13 years, so I thought I should go and meet her. 
I, I can understand people being skeptical, but once you've come across it, once you've seen somebody as different alters, reliving the memories and experiencing the pain all over again, there's no mistaking it. A lot of child abuse is either sexual or physical or emotional and psychological. Well, Satanist abuse is all. There's torture, a lot of sexual abuse. It's not just a one-off trauma, it's um, a relentless day-to-day -day prolonged trauma. If it's generational, it starts at a very early age, often in babyhood, uh, and so it would fit all the criteria for causing DID. I still couldn't believe that such atrocities could have happened to Helen in our middle-class suburban town. I wondered how Helen had felt when she first sensed something awful might have happened to her. I hurt a lot inside. I, I, I had not fully-fledged memories, but I was having flashbacks of, of something that was not very pleasant. It was almost like a cine film in my mind, and it would just flash by each caption and I couldn't piece anything together. At first I was actually diagnosed schizophrenic. I was losing chunks of time and gradually more little people came out. Um, little uh, people. Yeah, little people. <laughs> I just thought I was going crazy, basically. Initially, Alex came out and was shooting at everybody. Then William came out. Then I remember Brenda entering to my head and I thought, I hate the name Brenda, why the, what's the name Brenda got in my head for? And uh, she was a bit feisty. And, um, hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. Are you Brenda? Yeah. Hi, Brenda. Hi. We meet at last. Yeah. Are you doing so some filming? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> what have you heard about me? Is it all good, I hope? Oh, all good. <laughs> I heard you're very feisty. Very feisty. Yeah. What's feisty mean? The cute, giggly Brenda wasn't quite what I expected. She reminded me of Helen as a young teenager. I wanted to know what memories she had about what might have happened to Helen when we were still at school. I remember some really crappy things. One of my abusers got me pregnant. And... Helen was 16 at the time and um, I, sorry it's hard to talk about, then I, um, remember having to, having the, f the fetus or the what the embryo um, aborted and making being made to eat it. I feel bashed about. I'm remembering some horrible things, and I hurt because I feel robbed of everything. I feel bad and dirty. My innocence and trust have been stolen from me, as well as my body, which I hate anyway and which feels contaminated. All I ever wanted to be was a normal girl, not one who lives in a prison and always has to be on guard. Brenda.